Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another crafty cooking video. Man, I am proud of myself whipping these cooking videos out for you guys. I hope you guys are liking them. Today, I'm going to make a dish that is one of our absolute favorites. When we started eating low carb, we had to come up with alternatives to some of our favorites. And this is one of those. Today, we're going to make a keto cauliflower mac and cheese. Man, I don't know about you guys, but we used to love mac and cheese, and this is a great low-carb alternative. We love it for a side dish. You could even have it just as a main dish on its own, and if you love cauliflower and cheese, you're gonna love this dish. Let's take a look at the ingredients we're gonna need. One large head of cauliflower, one cup heavy whipping cream, three ounces of cream cheese, one teaspoon each garlic powder and onion powder, one cup of cheddar cheese, a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, one fourth cup of Parmesan cheese, and lastly, we need salt and pepper to taste. Now you know what ingredients we're gonna need to make this. The first thing we're going to do is we are gonna steam or boil our cauliflower. Now, as you've seen in the ingredients, I'm using packaged fresh cauliflower. Normally what I do is I buy frozen cauliflower florets. I'll use two large bags of that just because it's easy and convenient and it stays good longer. But when we went grocery shopping, they didn't have any frozen cauliflower. So I ended up getting this. I've already taken them all out of the bags and we are going to cook this in the microwave for probably 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, put a lid on it, cook it, and then we'll check it. You want it to be soft, but not mushy. And then the next step is we're gonna have to get all of the water out of it. So let me get this cooking, then we'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Our cauliflower just finished steaming in the microwave. I cooked this for 15 minutes. As you can see here, it's gonna be tender. You want it tender, but not mushy. So this is perfect. See how it kind of breaks up when I put my spoon in there? That's what you want. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drain this and you want to get as much moisture off of it as you can. Cauliflower retains a lot of water, so we wanna get as much of that water out as we can. Let me drain this and I'm gonna show you how I do that. I have just a small strainer, so I can't get this whole batch into one strainer. So I got as much as I could in there. I've got as much excess water just from the strainer off the cauliflower. What I do usually to get the rest of the, or as much water as I can out of the cauliflower, I will take a paper plate with some paper towels and I'm just gonna put some of the cauliflower on the plate and be careful because it's going to be hot. And then what I'll do is I'll take another set of paper towels, put that right on top of the cauliflower, and I'm just going to mash down lightly. And as you see, it's starting to get a lot of that moisture out of the cauliflower. I'm going to continue to do this until I can get as much moisture as I can out. Like I said, you're not going to get every single bit of it and you don't want to mush your cauliflower too much. So just be gentle when you're doing this. I'm going to get all the cauliflower done. We'll come back and we're going to make our cheese sauce. I've got the cauliflower as much moisture out of it as I could worth where I'm happy at. Now I'm just going to salt and pepper our cauliflower to taste and mix that in. We will be adding more salt and pepper to our cheese sauce as well, so you don't want to overdo it on your cauliflower. We're just going to go ahead and set this aside and we're going to start on our cheese sauce. To start with our cheese sauce, I've got just a small saucepan here heating up onto medium heat. We're going to start with our one cup of heavy whipping cream. And what you want to do is you want your heavy whipping cream to come to just a simmer. So we'll just kind of let that heat up. Our heavy whipping cream has come to a simmer. Next, we are going to whisk in our garlic and onion powder. And this is where we're going to salt and pepper the cheese sauce to taste. So a little pepper and a little salt. 
Commentary from the peanut gallery there. So, 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 and pepper to taste. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we need that in a jingle. So, so, so. <laughs> Once we've got our seasonings whisked in, we're going to add our cubed cream cheese. Now with your cream cheese, you're going to want to continue to whisk this until our cream cheese is melted and well incorporated with our heavy whipping cream. It'll probably take just a few minutes to do that. Now one thing I am going to do while I'm waiting for my cream cheese to get well melted and incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 375 so that by the time we are done making our cheese sauce and getting everything ready, it should be preheated and ready for us to put this in. Our cream cheese is good and incorporated in with our heavy whipping cream. So next, we're gonna add our one cup of cheddar cheese. I'm using sharp cheese. I just like the taste of the sharp cheddar with the cauliflower. Then we're gonna add our half a cup of mozzarella. And we're just going to continue whisking until our, all of our cheeses are melted and well incorporated into a smooth cheese sauce. And depending on how hot you have your stove setting on, depends on how long that'll take to melt. As you can see, it's already pretty much melting for us into a nice creamy cheese sauce. Look at that. <laughs> our cheese sauce is all melted and ready to go. It's time for us to mix it with our cauliflower. Now in this recipe, it says to put your cauliflower in your baking dish and then pour the cheese and mix it. I've just found that it's easier to do it in a bowl and then transfer it into my baking dish. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour this entire cheese mixture over our cauliflower. Get all that goodness in there. And then we're just gonna mix this until all of our cauliflower is nice and coated with our cheese mixture. We've got our cauliflower and cheese mixture all nice and well blended. Now it's time to put it into our baking dish. I just have a square baking tin and I've lined it with some aluminum foil. We're just gonna put this down in there. Oh my gosh, this already smells so good. It already tastes good. <laughs> I know, Jason already did a little taste test there. We're just gonna kinda get this all nice and pressed down into our baking dish. And our last step is we are gonna take our 1 4th cup of Parmesan cheese and this is gonna get spread directly on top of our cauliflower mac and cheese. I'm just taking it in my hand just so I can kind of do it a little more even. I feel like if I dump it on with the measuring cup, it's all gonna go in one place. So we just want a nice, as even as you can get layer of our Parmesan cheese on top here. And I just heard our oven beep, so it is ready to go. We've preheated to 375. We're gonna pop this in the oven and we are gonna bake this for 15 to 20 minutes until the top of our mac and cheese, cauliflower mac and cheese, is golden brown. Golden brown. Okay, you guys, our oven has beeped, so our, calf, our cauliflower mac and cheese is ready. Let's take this down and show you what it looks like. Mmm, it smells delicious. Look at that goodness. So we've got a light golden brown on the top. That's what you want. Cook it long enough to where we see our cheese is bubbling. It's heated all the way through. There you have it, guys. An easy keto cauliflower mac and cheese. And let me tell you something, this tastes delicious. As always, I will leave the link to this recipe I used down in the description. If you try this, come back and let me know how you like it. Another thing you could actually add to this, which I've done before, is you could bake some bacon and crumble it on top and bake that with it as well. It's really good or even mix it in. I've also done this and added diced ham and cooked it like that as a casserole and just had that as a main dish. But usually what, when I 
I cook it just like this with nothing extra. We use it as a side dish, which is what we're going to be doing tonight. Thank you guys as always for watching and subscribing. And until our next video. Peace, love, and expediting.